Thanks for the comments today. And I'll, uh, I, I echo uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. St. Marie's concerns that we're only having the parliamentary budget office here, officer here for uh, a mix in, uh, in hearings when we should have them for one full meeting. And uh, perhaps we'll have a motion on that to, uh, to make sure we get to ask him some thorough questions. But I'm going to ask the questions here today of the people on the, the Green Budget Coalition when they talk about things like inefficient uh, fossil fuel subsidies. And I would like to know an example of an inefficient fossil fuel subsidies that they think is there right now that we should address. Please. Uh, I'll, I'll just go ahead. Thank you for the question. Um, so our institute regularly compels inventories of fossil fuel subsidies, and um, those are available on our website. So we did one for 2018-19. We also did one um, after uh, COVID. So uh, there are a number of measures in those documents that we identify. Some of them are direct spending programs, and some of them, and many of them, are tax measures. Um, I'll focus on the tax measures because that's those are ones that for which we don't have a lot of information. And there was an office from the PB uh, report from the PBO earlier this year that estimated um, uh, several billions of dollars are potentially being foregone by government per year. Um, so these are types of subsidies that we would classify as inefficient um, and argue that they're a poor use of public money, primarily because they enable increased production of fossil fuels. And we know we need to be um, reducing the production of fossil fuels if we're going to meet a 1.5 degree target. Um, that's what the evidence shows us from the, the IPCC reports as well as the, the IEA reports. Sorry, I, I didn't hear a direct response there about an actual uh, program where we're funding fossil fuel subsidies. Can you give me one in 15 seconds or less, please? Uh, sure. So a, a good example would, would be some of the, the the tax measures um, that we that we see from the federal government regarding, um, for example, the Canadian development expenses. That that would be one example. Um, um, there's also yeah. Just a, thank you. Canadian development expenses don't exist in the Canadian fossil fuels industry for quite some time. Matter of fact, uh, Catherine McKenna stated very clearly that fossil fuels subsidies do not exist in at the federal level in Canada anymore. Um, so I think you need to update your facts on that. We are looking for where we can actually do this, but I will point out that fossil fuel production does not lead to actual uh, greenhouse gas increases. We're actually looking at fossil fuel consumption is the actual problem. And the more we uh, penalize Canadian producers, the more we're getting offshoring of jobs and pollution. So we're trying to lead to an industry here in Canada. Can you tell me how you think we're going to do that if we continue to fund money, throw money at subsidizing foreign producers of oil and gas? Um, well, for the first part of the, the question, we're actually advocating to reduce spend, uh, subsidizing foreign producers as well by asking the federal government to eliminate international public finance for fossil fuels. The second thing is that uh, regardless of the, the term subsidy, the reality is that the market is moving towards a clean energy industry here and internationally. And in order to, to best support Canadian workers and businesses, we should be investing in industries that help support our net zero goal, but also um, allow us to develop uh, and compete internationally. There's a large risk of stranded assets if we continue to provide support uh, to fossil fuel production. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm happy to, to go into more detail on that. Yeah, I know we're okay, short on time. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'd, lo I'd love some detail because stranded assets are, is a manufactured narrative. We're actually not stranding any assets. We're actually penalizing our assets here in Canada for the sake of foreign producers because we don't see the reductions happening anywhere else around the world. I'll remind you that greenhouse gas emissions around the world are a worldwide problem. 280 plants plus are being built to burn coal in Asia because we have penalized our natural gas producers not allowing them to get LNG offshore to abate the consumption of coal. These are not subsidies. These are efforts that we need to be taking in order to abate carbon production around the world. And yet we seem to be standing in the way with all kinds of narrative around what, how we're subsidizing the industry that we're actually moving forward. And I'll point out that Canadian oil sands producers have reduced their carbon footprint by over 36% in the last 20 years. This is significant on a worldwide scale. If the rest of the world moved in this direction, we'd be much further ahead. Let's talk about COP26 if we can and the commitments we've made. Thank you, there. Mr. McLean, that's, the, that, that's your time. 